Dice bags in hand. We have one brain that we share between us. To talk about role playing for all across the land. And you like it. The original and basic that one e they scoured. Kind of grabs you by the boo boo, don't it? To bring AD&D to the second power. You want me to put the hammer down? <laughs> Welcome to Thaco's Hammer, the best damn AD&D second edition podcast ever. In a taco shell? No, it's oh, like oh, okay. Now that ooh, with Fritos in it. Oh, ooh, yum! Awesome. Yum. That would be that would be interesting in a taco shell, even with the Fritos. Hi, folks. Thaco's Hammer is flat book number ninety-two, and we're all using protection. At least that's what everybody says they are. Um, but that's what the show is about, protection, <laughs> at least a little bit. Anyway, I'm DM Glenn, and we got DM Corey here. What's going on, everybody? We're back again. Ninety. This is 92, is that correct? That's, that's correct. That's correct. Oh, it's a year I graduated high school. Yeah, 92 100s pure. And that's DM Brian you hear over there. I didn't use protection. My girlfriend's eight months pregnant. Right on. <laughs> eight months? Wow. Yeah, that's yeah, back fast. in October. Yeah. Really? It, yeah, I kept it on the down low for a little while because, you know, we weren't sure how things were going to work out. But, yeah, ah. everything's everything's just percolating nicely. Well, that's good. That's good. And we got VM full on Gamer. Greetings, Gamer Nation. Who's eating a delicious taco flair and hamburger helper? With Fritos nom, nom, in nom, it. Nom, 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 With <laughs> Fritos. Damn, that sounds good. Oh, man, I'm going to have to go over to Bueno after this show. Yeah, his, his wife's a gamer and she can cook? Look out. No, yeah. that was my son cooking. Oh, you're co- oh well, that's cool. I have a minion. Oh, that's... He works for henchman sure? wages. <laughs> I was going to say, you sure you want him to move out? If he's a good henchman, you might want to keep him around. <laughs> I'm, I'm still out with, I'm still the great the grandfather. Get your grandfather a drink phase. Hey, as long hey, you take advantage of that for as long as you can. Yeah, that's right. So let's go into hits and crits. Well, one thought he was invincible, the other thought he could fly. So? They were both wrong. Son of a bitch is dug in like an Alabama tick. You're hit. You're bleeding, man. I ain't got time to bleed. We're sending somebody in to negotiate. Anybody else want to negotiate? Hits and crits. Hits and crits. A week of gaming. Anybody? Mm, what you been doing? Not me. Not, what you not been doing? Oh well, I'm still working on you know campaign ideas and stuff like that. I'm I'm trying to think of what's going to come after the adventure, after the adventure after the one that you're currently on. I'm wow. like I'm going like two adventures ahead right now, and because uh, the the second one you guys are going to have is a little bit on the short side to probably take about three, maybe four sessions to finish. Uh-huh. And then I got to figure out what I'm going to do. Cause I'm wondering if I actually have the stones enough to throw you guys in my castle, Amber, <laughs> my completely redone remade for second edition castle, Amber. Looks like Corey's cool. in on board with it. Yeah. Oh, you're down That's, Corey. You, that scary face. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I just looked at his camera. He's he's down. That for it. All right. Slasher smile he has. Yeah. And I put the Emberville without a brain collector. Sure, why not? Oh, I've got brain, hey, brain collector. Hey, or with a brain collector, even better. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Exactly. Corey put his fists up. I'm like, yeah, he wants to take on the boxing match. I know. Oh yeah, full on. What you been doing? Army stuff. Between bites. bit of army stuff and also a bit of tech home tech support. Wow. Resurrecting computers from the dead, translating drives over, installing a new gaming computer rig in for my wife so that she can become her own subscriber of the Old Republic. Oh, awesome. Nice. Family that games together, plays together. Yeah, absolutely. How many, how many, yeah. And how many servers is she going to be on? Same one so far. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> you haven't crowded her out? <laughs> Why do you think he's put in the new gaming rig? Ah. <laughs> Got it. Corey, what's up? What you been doing? What's up? Not um, here, not, no, I'm not. I'm dry. I'm on the wagon. Um, dry I am. I, 
just swapped rooms with the roommate. Um, I gave him the room with the cinder block wall so I could be out here closer to the gaming room. I know it's weird. I'm a gamer. Shut up. Um, well, I've seen how much stuff you have, Corey. I don't blame yeah. you. <laughs> well, I rearranged the the living room and stuff, and everybody knows that I took the d20srd.org idea and I suspended a projector uh, projector from my ceiling out of the drop tiles, out of the drop ceiling, uh-huh. and it projects it directly onto the table. So my D&D map actually projects onto the table in front of the players. Um, the problem was the ceiling's not high enough. It's not far enough away, so the map isn't big enough because you know you move the projector farther away, the map gets bigger. So I decided to move everybody into the living room. So now I have it set up so my miniature painting table will become my DM station, mm-hmm. and the two couches, instead of being in an L shape, will make a U Mm. Does your projector have a keystone setting? Yeah, it does. Have you tried taking advantage of that to see if you can make up for vertical feet with a couple lateral? Well, the, the the point of me moving now is instead of it being three and a half feet off the off the floor uh-huh. um, at a regular size height table, it's now going to be a foot off the floor on the coffee table right between the two couches. So now all my players, instead of sitting on a wooden <coughs> bench and sitting at folding chairs, they now get to recline and relax on couches for awesome. the duration of my D&D. So it lowers the table down, and everybody will be able I'll get a bigger table, and I have my own desk. So, yeah, it's going to make it a little bit easier. Plus, my living room really wasn't getting a lot of use out of it. So, But I had to cancel D&D for this weekend because family came in. I got a family reunion going on. Understand. So. Mm-hmm. I've been uh, drawing maps, remaking maps, working on my uh, second iteration or second edition. Ah, my there you campaign, go. My campaign source book. For I, my saw, world. I swear to God, Corey, I thought you were going to say uh, the the projector wasn't high enough, so I cut a hole in the ceiling. <laughs> That's <laughs> where I thought he was going. I thought he was going to make I think it. the land. I think the landlady upstairs would be weird like what, what what is this thing sticking out of my kitchen for? <laughs> and besides don't touch, it, don't touch it and besides Corey, your your players need to be more comfortable so they can accept their deaths better <laughs> you know what you, you, frank you know, why doesn't the roomba move around the kitchen <laughs> you know it just i just sits figured, there in hums i just figured that you know you know, you, you get angry, you can stand up and throw a folding chair wrestling WWF style. Oh, but if you're on a couch, it's a little hard to throw it when I tell your character. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, on a couch full of junk food. Yeah, you do. It, need reduces, it reduces the reaction time because of the uh, <laughs> lunge factor of trying to yep. get up out of the couch. Okay. Yep. Self-preservation. Got it. So the DM has those precious few seconds to take cover. <laughs> exactly. Or, or duck or duck, Glenn. Yeah. How, how what you've been doing in gaming? Oh, boy. I, I already gave the con report on here, didn't I? Yes, Last you time? did. Yes, okay, Flatbook 88. Fine. That's right. Okay. Uh, Excuse me, 91. Sorry. Thank you. Oh, yeah, we I've had a little issue. With... 88 on the plane. We, we, had a little issue. we had a little issue with that today. We fixed it. Just a little one. That's all I want to say, really. Just a small one. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, I've been – I'm still looking for a place to put all the stuff I got at the con. <laughs> it's still sitting um, there? I'm, I got room I'm, at my house. I'm – <laughs> Glenn may, may, may not see I'm it upset, again. I, I'm upset that I got I bought playing at the world that John Peterson wrote, and he was at the con and didn't tell anybody, and he, so I couldn't get him to sign it. Uh, either next year, maybe. I know he told everybody after the fact. Oh, that was fun. I was there Saturday. What? <laughs> well, apparently he wanted to be incognito. We played our last uh, Labyrinth Lord game because oh. Matt's got his panties in a wad about fifth edition. Right. Uh, so we're going to start that. The next session, I, I run Mutant Future. Mm-hmm. Some interesting characters in there. And then we go into the, the – play the uh, Oh, he's – Ooh, ooh the starters and start on the Tyranny of Dragons. Ooh, thing. ooh, Mr. Kata, Mr. Kata. Um, What's up? You Do you guys still want to do Marvel superheroes? You, sure. you said Mutant Future, and that just triggered something in my brain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Corey. Well, I could kind of Dude. part. Oh God! Yeah, Corey. Corey's doing his psychotic I'd, impersonation. I'd love to have a pair of those sunglasses. Well, it's either that or as I do this, Brian. Either that, or he's a really <laughs> big Back to the Future fan. Well, you could do this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> my Shogun of Harlem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who's that's my that's my Wolverine. 
the, you, the funny part is the last the last dragon was on TV last week, and I actually watched the end. I'm like, and I thought Ty Mac was a really good actor, and I'm like, oh my god, he's horrible. The guy playing <laughs> show, the guy playing Show Enough was better than him. My God. Anyway, sorry, I digress. I, well, that's all right. That's all right. Oh, speaking of Marvel superheroes, folks, next next year. This gives you you and Corey incentive to come down too. Next year, uh, Jeff Grubb is going to be there, special oh, I'm guest. Down. Yeah, I'm down. And it's like if he don't run if he don't run face rip Marvel, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> no, the, well, I shouldn't say that in a public forum like this, but I will be really disappointed, yeah, Jeff. Here you go. There you Just go. Just don't go in the alley in the back of the hotel. No, I'm not going to do. That. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, don't make sure you're not alone at any time. Yes. <laughs> I'm starting to plan out my next. Uh, convention game uh and i've decided i've 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 taken kind of an informal poll on the facebook site Mm -hmm. and uh to what system i'm going to use and it looks like it's going to be tunnels and trolls well now you have a year's time to get intimately familiar with the rules and yeah uh you hear it here folks and my my venture two words cattle drive (laughs) um so I got a year to plan that out too. Exactly. Yep. Just don't, just don't put it off until what April. <laughs> oh, sure. Why not? Happy birthday. Got to write something. I invite you to come up with a plan. Yes. For how somebody is going to pull the rundown on your cattle drive, like you didn't have a plan when I tried to. Mm-hmm. Weapon proficiency, pissed off cattle is going to appear in your game. <laughs> I guarantee it. Tell them about that, Bull. I forgot about that. In my last well, convention he a, yeah. He has us in this place where we had just come off of the cattle drive for bringing the characters to the adventure locale. And things are going down that involve zombies attacking the friggin' cattle zombies, at the stockyard. Ghouls, zombies, ghouls, any kind of skeletons, you name it. So, instead of trying to beat on critters that are undead, that I don't want to touch with a 10-foot pole anyway. In, in the pen. Yeah. In the pen. <laughs> I take a piece of the fence, my ten foot pole, and start beating about upon the cattle to drive them over the skeletons and zombies and ghouls. And it worked real good. Yeah, I was gonna eventually, say that. yeah. Yeah, and the and I take a sling bullet shot at who? Who's in melee? I'm not shooting any of the people in melee. I'm attacking one of the cows. He was Thanks, trying- shot off the wall, cow into a cat into the skeleton. And, and it a stampede, yeah. That's one uh, hell of a blunt weapon, I'll say that. Yeah, the magic user picked up on that, too, and he was like magic missling the butts of the cows. <laughs> Trying to dual wield the branding iron from the hot coal pit next to the slaughterhouse. I wow. saw. I, he, I, I posted the, the con report on my blog, and he wrote saying that my – I said, I want to play this character again, and I want to turn that branding iron into a, bad, a, a wand. <laughs> I don't yeah, it's called a that wand much. of wizard mark. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. All you need is heat metal. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> that's true. That's true. Unfortunately, my, my the, the next one I'm going to play is going to take it all the way back to the beginning. That was the climax episode right. of the campaign. Right. So I'm going to start from the beginning and say, okay, we got to get these thousand head across the country to – to this guy. Okay. Oh, so let's see. You could, you know what you could do? You could stretch that out over several conventions by doing it. Exactly. Steps. I saw it as a campaign, like at least five games. Okay. That's cool. That's actually Ride. a really good idea. Yeehaw. Get them up. Move them out. <laughs> Ride <Yep>. them in. <laughs> Ride them out. Rawhide. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's an awesome idea. Yeah. So very awesome idea. I'm going to remember that. Um, so that's me, mm-hmm. and uh, I understand we have no emails. Yeah, our email list, our email box is completely empty. Brady, you haven't emailed us in oh, I'd say probably five months. We haven't heard from Kojo in. He's on vacation. Yeah, me. that's true. Well, kind of, sorta. <laughs> But nice. yeah, we haven't heard from any of our regulars in a little bit. So come on, guys, get on the stick. We need stuff. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And you can send it to thankoshammer at gmail.com. We also got a phone number somewhere. That number is 405 806 Call now. Operators are not standing by. They're outside taking a smoke, just like Jim Wampler. You can uh, even go and throw stuff down on the forums on osrgaming.org or on d20radio.com. That's yeah. right. And, and the myriad of other places like Dragonsfoot that we seem to, like, stink up regularly. <laughs> or, or, yeah. Oh, never Amazing mind. what tumbles out of my mouth, isn't it? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's, let's go on to Rule Zero, then. I'm the only one around here who gives a 
Rock and roll. Hey. Rules are there ain't no rules. <laughs> hey, ladies, that was fun. Thank you for a very enjoyable day. Rule zero. Rule zero. Head him up. Rawhide in a whole cloth dungeon design part one. The concept. Right. Hmm. Okay. Sure, this isn't brain brainstorm. Yeah, this, you know, I know what this is kind of. I'm not going to say Corey didn't come up on, with this on his own, but this is sort of where it came from. Because remember when we did the whole cloth for characters? That's and then right. We, then do. we made an adventuring party out of it. That's right. <laughs> yep. And uh, you know, th- so I just said, I'll take credit. I'll take all right, credit. all right, take the credit. You can have it. Um, so I said, you want to know what? Let's do this for a uh, dungeon for, you know, just designing a dungeon. We don't have to go through the whole designing the whole thing. We could eat, we could do it brainstorm style and just say, okay, right. where's this dungeon? Why is it here? What's it for? You know, what's it good for? Oh God, did I actually go that? Yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> absolutely <clears throat> nothing. Anyway. Um, and just, you know, just do it that way, you know, a little quick and dirty one. And then maybe once we get through the other two parts of it, then we can kind of, you know, come back and sort of just design, or not even design it, but sort of just bring everything together in, you know, brainstorm style and just put it out there for, you know, our, our listeners. So basically you're thinking like me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we. I mean, we come. People that love DM brainstorm. We just sit there and just spitball stuff, and we play off each other and we work with each other's concepts. And I think we've come up with some damn good stuff, you know, to be uh, without being, oh, you know, well okay. boasting too much. Okay. Oh, but okay. So that being said, that being said, the con the concept. Yeah. There is nothing right now. Anybody right. Anybody want to throw one out? We have a no. Let's okay. Or, or, okay, let me clarify this. Okay, we're throwing out concepts and stuff a la brainstorm, right? We're not explaining. Yeah. This is how you do it. No, we're, no, we're just doing it. We're just doing it. Yeah, we. Hey, we didn't work for TSR uh? for fifteen years, a la like Frank Menser and you know uh, Jeff Grubb and those guys. We were, hmm? What I thought that if this wasn't officially just going to be a brainstorm. Then this would be the discussion of. How do you come up with a concept for a dungeon yeah. design? Yeah, that's, right, what, I, yeah, that's for, what I meant. Let's go there for a little while then. Yeah, let's. Yeah, we can do that. All right. Yeah, How we do you come up with a concept for a game, an adventure, a dungeon, whatever? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's you know, it's like, well, look around you. Yeah, you've got you've got <laughs> yeah. ton, you've got uh, historical sites. You know, I mean, how many people have run stuff off of Stonehenge and leaving freaking Spinal Tap out of it for a minute? Yeah. <laughs> you um, know, you got like yeah, Stonehenge, castles, you know, castles in medieval Europe, castles in freaking uh, Asia, India. Um, you know, you've got places here in the United States. You know, you could do it. You could. The actual idea for dungeons can come up, come from almost anything. Sorry about that. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're. Your go ahead, go on. dungeon, your enclosed building, your 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 thing with walls and a roof that has an adventure happening in it. That's right. Is it part of a city? Is it under the city? Is it over the city? Is it just the maze of the city itself? Is it a is it a mine? Mm-hmm. Is it an underground fortification? Is it a is it a deep delving warren that was inhabited by some other creatures? Mm-hmm. Was mm-hmm. it crafted by That's dwarves? Right. Was it crafted by orcs? Mm-hmm. Who also, knows what? Also, pop culture. Yeah, Tons for sure. Out there. Yeah, movies, oh, yeah. books, films, uh, TV shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, internet. The internet. Yeah. You know, <laughs> is it a mad? Is, is it a mad design of trap-filled horror that's just designed to kill characters in grisly, grisly manner? Oh, your like you. oh, your games. Or, no, or, or is it? Or is what? it a concept where y- you can use every monster in a monster book? Uh, world's largest dungeon. I'm looking right at you. <laughs> but yeah, right I mean, now, you're about three days out from the end of uh, the latest <laughs> Kickstarter from those folks about from a certain population of folks about their mega dungeon. The mega dungeon three Kickstarter is about to kick off. And, wow! And one of the best ways from Gaming Paper Adventures. Okay. <laughs> One of the best ways to get an idea also is to look at a manga dungeon. Just look at it. Yep. Yeah. You can Just do... like dissect dissect it in your mind, saying, mm-hmm. "I like this section. I'm going to make that my dungeon." 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can if you are anywhere near an a collector on let's say Fulon's or Corey's level, you know, <laughs> you don't even have to. Are you saying we have level. maps? <laughs> You've got you got you guys have got a ton of crap and I will leave it at that. Um, well, just, I like to go on the internet and mm-hmm. like if I need a map for an adventure, like this last time when I did the convention adventure, I need a temple. Right. Temple. And then I print it out, and then I don't I don't have to use the whole thing. I don't like those rooms there. I don't like those rooms there. Let's put one off here. You mm-hmm. modify it. Right, of course. You know, I mean, for my own campaign, you know, I've got this idea for uh, uh, a monastery, you know, off of the, you know, from the main town where most, most adventurers start. And right. I actually went and I actually started looking at floor layouts of Shaolin temples to try and get a good idea of it. You know, and... You've got there are so many buildings. I mean, you could make you could honestly make a dungeon, a mega dungeon out of the Pentagon if you really yeah, wanted to. Yes. Yeah. Quite easily. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, uh, God only knows and how. And then turn it on in its axis as multiple ways and make right. it a planar location. That's one way <laughs> of getting go. an idea for a concept. Right. Like I said, there's millions out there. You gotta be you gotta be, be more observant. Right. But, um, but to break it down to its basic elements. Yes. The basic idea, if you're talking about dungeon design, mm-hmm. is it designed to keep things out or is it designed to keep things in? Is it designed to keep things safe or is it designed to kill things? Mm-hmm. Right. If you can answer those questions, you have the basic <laughs> core of whatever in the hell it is you want to do with whatever piece of map you have. And that's just not just dungeons either. That's... Every part of the adventure. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we j- covered Whisper and Venom in the aforementioned Splatbook 88, and the whole dungeon, once you go through the majority of it, then you hear, you know, then you hear from one of the, you know, the NPCs like, no, this dungeon wasn't to keep things in, it was to keep thi- keep things, actually keep things out, it was to keep things in. And, exactly. Uh, you know, There's going to be a fundamental design difference between the dwarven halls that are lived in by a working class people yep. and the tomb of a crazed god where they <laughs> want to squirrel away their ancient leaders and their great and wonderful treasures <laughs> or, a, or, or or a lousy uh, or, or a scruffy warren of tunnels that w- rat men have dunked through yeah pretty much you know or and, a massive fantabulous treasure hoard yeah <laughs> exactly. a little cheeky in a little bottle <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah i don't want my game to turn into aladdin no thank you um but you know what one of the best ghostbusters games i ever played in was and i didn't do this this guy wrote it um he read i don't forget uh, doing research in the library this is before for the internet folks mm-hmm. um he was a he liked baseball Okay. And uh, he read the history of baseball about the only guy who died getting hit in the head with a baseball. Oh. He used, he used that for a Ghostbusters game, and it was fantastic. I like, I like the concept because, yeah, there's only been one guy who's died by being – he got yeah. hit by a pitch, right? Yeah, he got hit by a pitch. So he, he showed up at, like, uh, the opening game – a baseball season mm-hmm. in New York and he showed up as a ghost and he pitched these slime balls at like the pitcher, the players and everything. He tried to bean everybody with them. <laughs> I like and it. we were, and we, we were called out to take care of it. Right. Um, and it was one of those, one of those situations where, yeah, we, we could, you know, deal with it and we had a hard time capturing him, but it was basically one of those, we need to set the ghost to rest. Yeah. Yeah. Before. And he, we, so we yeah. ended up out, going out there on the field with nobody there played a game with them awesome <laughs> and it was it was great it was just fantastic anyway uh, that but that's yeah. an idea of you know i'm sure he he liked the game ghostbusters he, that was the only one i think he ever ran but it just he got like whoa this could be really cool right and he got that through research right through reading like baseball books yeah history books. yeah that's yeah you could take it take it from almost any source historical right. current events you know anything but the whole thing is is that and we've all been guilty of it, you know, maybe not you full on, but back when you first started playing, you know, that was the, the be all end all of playing D&D. It was to go down into a dungeon, seeing what was there, killing it and taking stuff. 
you know, there what? wasn't too. I do that all the time. That's well, Dungeon Crawl <laughs> Classics type activity. That's I, what yeah, you do. Exactly. Yeah. You need to have something underground occupied by somebody, either who was there in the first place or mm-hmm. who moved in later, who right. has something you want besides gold coins and treasure, right. and you need to take get through them to take it. Right. right. Exactly. Or and, it's the shortcut through the mountains. Right. The pass that you need to go under the mountains instead of over <laughs> the mountains through a hazardous piece of terrain. That's I'm guarded, looking that's at you, guarded Tolkien, by a type and I'm, demon. Yes. And I'm also looking at you, uh, Dennis L. McKiernan. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're trying to say that he kind of... Uh, oh, he says pick- it about right in his friggin' comments and introduction, but that's exactly what he did in the Silver Call duology and the Iron Tower trilogy, mm-hmm. which are an homage to the Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I, rec- I recently got some inspiration off of a Facebook story Uh-oh. that somebody put on, posted on a website of about an actual place that exists in Nevada between Reno and Vegas in the middle of nowhere in the desert in this small town mm-hmm. called the Clown Motel. Ooh. And it is all clown motif in the rooms. There's clowns hanging, you know, oh. from, Bozo, from, from Bozo to Emmett Kelly. They got pictures. Oh they my got God. masks. Like that. And you know what? The, and you know what the best part about it is? It's right next to a cemetery. Oh my god! I'd sleep in the freaking <laughs> car. I'd, I'd see. I'd say, if that isn't mutant future material, I don't know what is. What is you exactly? That, that's like House of a Thousand Corpses, take two. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh my I, god! He, he told about it. He said the guy even. The guy even stood. The guy even stayed there with a friend of his, and his friend woke up at three o'clock in the morning, and he saw the back of a clown in the cemetery. He says he did. The back of a clown, he got up, and the clown turned around with an evil grin, and he turned around, and he was doing really nasty sexual things to a ham. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, that's funny. He got, creepy, but hold funny. Up, yeah, bad batch of beer or something. <laughs> yeah, creepy, but funny. Oh, my and his, God. And, his, and the guy woke him up and says, we're leaving right now. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those. Yeah, that yeah, that is the beginning of a horror movie for sure. You That's, know, that'd be, oh my God. I mean, Mutant Future, College of Thulu, Chill, mm-hmm. uh, you name Killer it. Wow. From outer space, riding Sharknado 3. Oh, my yes. God. Yeah, no yes. kidding. Yeah. Or as far as the concept goes, do what I do. I do the William Castle approach. I come up with the title. And then I think of the story. And you, then you come up with what's, you know, what's behind it. Yeah, that, which yeah. is not a bad way to go. I love doing it that way because I never know. Excuse me. I never know where it's going to go. Right. I mean, especially when you're just pulling stuff out of your head, sort of seemingly at random. That's the whole thing. My but, game was called the Castle of the Howling Dead. There was a castle and the dead were not howling. <laughs> That's because I took my copy of Grave Robbers from Outer Space, the card game, which has a word on each card. And you're supposed to make a, a movie title out of it. So I went, right. boom, Castle, Howling, Dead. There's my title. <laughs> yep. And then, you and just, then I said, wow. Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, see that. See, I have to I have to give you some props, Glenn, because that's the more difficult way of doing it. Usually, oh, I come up with it, the name last. <laughs> you know, it's it's the more difficult way, but it is so liberating as far as like your thought processes. Right, right. Because you just start thinking about it, and okay, this and this and this and this and this, and right. you know, things start to flow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it's I like it. That's all I can say. Hey, that's nothing wrong with that. To do it. Nothing wrong with that. I mean. But when you're coming up with a concept, you, usually, you know, being the DM, of course, if you're, you know, designing a dungeon 99 times out of 100, you know, you have to sort of keep your players and your audience in mind. Um, right. Earlier today, I was just perusing, you know, email. I was checking to see if we had any emails. And right. uh, I got a little thing from Twitter. There's this one guy, I forget his name. I should probably look it up. But there was this guy who. Um, there's this guy who, uh, follow, who decided to follow us on Twitter. We are at Thanko's Hammer. If you can't, for some reason, you can't email us or leave a voicemail, you know, you know, send us, send us a tweet. We'll, you know, we'll get it and we'll, you know, read whatever question you got there. If you can limit it to okay, how many characters open mailbag. Tell us what has been tweeted upon us. Yeah. I'm looking for the message right now. And for some reason I can't find it. Um, oh, there it is. It is uh, from this guy D M Samuel, who's got a who does a podcast himself. Um, he's got this this uh, website pgmusings.com, and uh-huh. in on that site, 
uh he was he the most recent post he put on on this uh on his website was uh he, the thing called the allure dungeon and he's t- basically talking about how he loves doing mega dungeons as a dm but his players aren't really down with it you know and I was like, you know, so I just gave him a little response after thanking him for following us on Twitter. And, right. you know, I basically just said to him, I said, look, you know, you have to keep your players in mind when you when you decide to bring something in or you're in this case creating a dungeon. You have to you know, kind of got to know the audience you're playing to. You know what I mean? Right. And, right. you know, There's a way that you can get the best of both worlds. You can is. make your mega dungeon and deliver it to them in chunks and snippets. Mm-hmm. That's right. Right, right, and that is so right. Yeah, but you know, like I said, it's you key if you've got a concept, or if you're like Glenn who decides to come up with the name of such a place and then work his way out from there. See, he goes from <clears throat> he goes from like this one point and he expands outward, where a lot of people sort of come in with the big area and they start moving inward. So, right, you know, and. You know, you've I got, split the difference and come at it with a function. What is you, the? Yeah, you come purpose? at it sideways, full on. I know, I know how. You... There's a purpose I can build <laughs> out, out from that, mm-hmm. and design what the layout and the plan would logically be. Uh-huh. I can also go to the side and say, in this place that is now built, who would live here and why, and what are they doing? Right, exactly, and that's mostly yep. how. That's how most people usually do. It's like, okay, why is this dungeon here? What's it for? I mean. You know, I mean, aside from if you're just a newbie to the game and you just want to throw a dungeon well, for your We're presenting an easily defended chest around a, 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 a poorly <laughs> defended chest in an easily opened room with a small pack of goblins in the open field waiting for adventurers to come and kill us because mm-hmm. that is what we do. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, exactly. there's, no there's, there's another way of, of coming up with a concept. Um mm-hmm. It's another way I've done it. I do the I, I, I really like doing the title thing, but every once in a while you will come up with a scene that mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. get this idea that you want to see. You get like one main scene from the adventure, and you build oh, on that. Yeah, build, yeah, yeah, build I, from that. that. But exactly, that is I I put a caveat on that caveat in yeah. for because don't get don't don't wed the scene. Don't get in yeah. love with the scene yeah. because nine times out of ten the players won't go that way yeah and the thing oh is, yeah. i can make them go that way i can <laughs> make them go that yeah. way well my my i told you about that the one before i said i wanted to see ventures fighting like goblins or orcs in a barn with the animals and all the other stuff getting in the way mm-hmm. and i built off of that mm-hmm. and i came up with the concept yeah which was actually yeah which is cool and you know but yeah i mean like i said you're one of the few DMs I know of who can who will who more often than not will go from that end of it rather than going from you know going from just having you know a minor you know just a, I want to put this dungeon here and let's see what we can do to make the players want to go down into it you know rather than you know right. coming up with a name or coming up with a scene that you want to see you know played out and going that way which is awesome. And, you know, and, and... <laughs> I yeah. made a dungeon based off of this image I'm sending you guys. Oh boy! Oh boy! This ought to be interesting. Yes, uh, um, you know, you know, Val Luton made two of his best horror films off of paintings. Oh re- yeah. Yeah. Watch Bedlam sometime. Uh, that was done off of an old painting. Ooh. Nothing. There was no. <laughs> <laughs> and I did that using this tool. Oh boy. Where I said, I don't care what happens, the bottom level is going to be a lava pool or pit With where dra- it dwells one large red dragon. Of Ooh. course. Yeah, that's his. That's he's show, he showing his showing central casting dungeons, folks. You dare next. interrupt my bath. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is, this is like, you know. Treasure bath! I'm going to have a treasure bath! <laughs> exactly. He's with adventurers. <laughs> yeah, season with adventures exactly, but yeah. So I mean, there's some good ideas on how to come up with mm-hmm. stuff, folks. I mean, yeah. like I said, just be more observant. Mm-hmm. Um, the best, some of the best actors are observers. Oh my god! Um, and that goes for DMs too. Mm-hmm. What? No, sorry. I I'm looking at the clown motel pictures you sent me. Yes. And the one 
cheerio Kenobi thing Nivaz. with all those clowns and stuff. I'm ge- I'm getting more and more creeped out the more pictures I'm looking at. Oh, you know, you want to know what the capper is? That, that graveyard, Tanopa used to be a gold rush town, and, and that is the graveyard where all the old miners got buried. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, you couldn't you couldn't pay me you to could, stay there. You, yeah, but you couldn't write, you couldn't, couldn't get a better... Oh, yeah, you certainly could. Better, uh, concept <laughs> And idea. you know what? Oh. Now you can have the ghosts of folks who are digging for jokes. Oh! Oh! Oh. Okay, we're done talking. Yeah, we're folks. done. Tell us, you talk about it. Tell us about it. Dickles ever at gmail dot com. I've got to end on that really bad, bad joke. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> and so we will go on to magic fingers. The white wizard approaches. There's no such thing as magic. You always were a better magician. Who does know that? Whatever your secret was, you have to agree. Mine is better. Magic fingers, thank you full on for killing that last segment. Uh, oh, quick thing, uh, Corey's got some family stuff going on, so he's had to bow out. That's right. I was so, going to mention that. I forgot. But he so, will. Thank you. He, by his own word, he will be back next week. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we are going to talk about the abjuration school of magic. Yes, indeed. Which is basically a protective school of magic. So mm-hmm. you know, if you can't get a cleric to go with you. Get an abjurer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. If you can, or if you he, can, can, he can't, he can't turn or heal, but he can sure protect your butt. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And you know, the, the good thing, the only the thing is, is that abjurers, as much as they have the protection spells, I'm looking at the schools that are barred from them, which is illusion and uh, alteration. alteration. Yeah, alteration. <laughs> that still gives him a nice offensive punch. I mean, he's not as uh, he's still an evoker. Yes, he he's, he's, he's the vocation spells. Yes, he can. But you know, like I said, he's not as um, God. What's the word? Um, help me, guys. Um, oh God, I'm just having a lot of trouble today. This is just this is just. He doesn't how have the been. firepower. He doesn't have yeah. the restrictions. He doesn't have the right. um, willingness mm-hmm. to see others die. Uh, <laughs> let me take. No. No, no, no. Let me take. Uh, hordes of minions for 200 the, to the Glenn. utility that's the word they, yeah god i don't know what is wrong with me today i've just been out of it um I, the utility of say uh a transmuter which is one who uses alteration spells right out right. of out of being a generalist <clears throat> mage the you know the transmuter's the one who has the most utility because he can he has the widest range of spells next to a generalist but right. you know even though if he the abjurer will have more protection spells, you know, than offensive spells or even just the you know run of the mill utility spells that mages have. You know, it's still a very decent pl- class to play. I honestly thought until I read and actually looked into this that they weren't able to take you know evocation, and then I'm like, they can still they can still cast fireball at fifth level. Okay, hey. <laughs> you know, they could still they can still you know. Uh, con- contribute to uh, the damage, you know, the damage factor, which I've always said that mages, when they reach fifth level, and they could start casting third level spells. You know, their you their usefulness to the party starts going up almost exponentially mm-hmm. <laughs> because you know, yeah, you. Although have I although I must laugh when it says opponent spells and acquired powers on on greater level when an abjurer reaches 20th level mm-hmm. his mastery of magical protective force becomes so powerful his armor class is raised from 10 to 9 <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> I you, you gotta you gotta still remind him he's still a wizard folks well yeah <laughs> well at 20th level he will have you know high level protective magics on top of yeah. that so but, oh boy why do you even give him that i mean yeah. what's the point he can protect his his but the way it is. Yeah, I know you want to know what that that's something that I didn't agree with the complete wizards book about back in the day. It's like if you're a 20th level, you should have something that kind of is, you know, indicative that you are an arch wizard, you know, uh-huh. that you are really high level in what you do and dropping your armor class by 1 isn't it? <laughs> you know yes. what? I mean? Yeah, if you want to make it a 5 yeah, that would be something. yeah, something like that. Yeah, but, exactly. you know, yeah. Exactly. Or even make it like just his aura of protection is so powerful from working with abjuration magic that he has like a, 
the equivalent of a ring of protection plus, you know, three or yeah. something like that, which is, you know, minus three to AC. And How about you get a, the benefits of your power is such that as long as you have spells and memory, you have the effect of wearing a ring of protection plus what's your wisdom bonus? Now, th- there's an idea. I like that. Or until, until, yeah. You know. Wisdom is the prerequisite, for, is the prime requisite for the abjurer. Yeah, ah, there so. it is. Yeah, see, full, full now, full. now, as, as with... far now as far as races go, only humans can be abjurers. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, eh, I can kind of see it, but I'm sorry, you know, considering how they've played up elves over the last thirty-five, almost forty years now. Yeah, it is forty years. <laughs> how about that? We know they know abjuration spells because we know that they keep binding big ass horrible demons deep under the earth and forgetting to, <laughs> that they They've buried them. Oh, 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 like oh, oh Mithranor? Are you talking about that? Oh yeah. <laughs> Are you pointing <laughs> in that direction? Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I would say elves could be abjurers if it was me. But yeah, and I. They are I totally... very good, and they are a very good school to work with other schools, mm-hmm. especially especially opposition schools. Yeah, for sure. And if you've got an illusionist and an abjurer in the party, you're golden. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're going to have a summoner in the party and you don't have a friend who's an abjurer, you're going to get into trouble with whatever you <laughs> called up. Yes. Absolutely. You you nailed it full on. You really did. Wow. You know, but I'm looking at the school, which is, you know, most of the spells are in the back of the uh, uh, spells and magic, uh, you know, supplement. <clears throat> and, you know, even going from like a spell that's, you know, like a spell like Alarm. Uh, alarm is actually a really good spell for a first level party when they're out in the wilderness trying to get from point A to point B and they don't want to get jumped. Right. And, you know, I mean, you've got things like that. You've got, like, Protection from Hunger and Thirst, which is in Spells and Magic. That is an awesome spell to have, you know, because it keeps you from starving to death if you are if you are completely screwed and you're trying to stay alive. Um, you got spells like Protection from Cantrips, Protection from Paralysis, <laughs> which uh-huh. is actually for, for the uh, important Protection from Poison. Uh-huh. Which is fairly good. I mean, we talked about uh, Invisible Mail um, in Splatbook uh, 91. And, you know, that that's a really good spell for mages. And, you know, you got spells like, you know, Iron Mind, <clears throat> you know, which helps you with, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm looking it up while we're talking, um, Iron Mind, I believe, protects from um, uh, mental spells like Charm Person and things like that. Um, uh-huh. You know... But non-protection. I mean, even just the basic protection from evil. That I mean, a, a lot of players I've I've noticed over the years, a lot of players don't use that spell when they have it. Be, but it does more than just give you a a, a a a bonus to your saving throws against you know evil magic and stuff. It actually protects you from uh you know actually gives you a little area to where evil can't get to you. You know, it's like a magical right. mm-hmm. around you, you know, or around the, the person that the mage puts it on. You know, right. it's more useful than that. <clears throat> and, you know, um, if you're going to find, you can always tell the abjure in the party because she's the guy wearing stone skin. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. you know, I'm, the funny part is even uh, that's kind of funny. I'm looking at, <clears throat> I'm looking for stone skin and it's not on the list. I'm shocked to be honest. It, are you looking? Are you looking in the main uh, the core book? No, I'm player's looking, handbook. I'm looking in the uh, spells and magic. It's not. Oh, oh, the list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and stone skin. Stone skin. Yeah, I know. It's there? kind of funny. I'm looking up stone skin. There was, an, there was an errata thing on that. Yeah, I, I bet there was. I, I, mean, one, I think it was one of their typos. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm looking Second at I'm problem. looking at stone yeah. skin in, on my little app here. And, yeah, it's an alteration spell, which actually kind of makes that sense. That, too. Yeah, it could be alteration. I'd, I'd make it abjuration. Which, sure. but yeah, which, yeah, but it makes it opposite school, then. That's stupid. Mm-hmm. I mean, no, that's I the could, thing. Yeah, that is the thing. 
alter stone skin is taking you and altering you. That is not what abjuration is. Abjuration is protection fields, what protection magics, getting rid of the summoned thing. It is, yeah. There are lots of things that are protection. Yeah, but it could be both. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think, well, I could, no, I can see it both ways. I mean, personally, I would probably make it part of the abjuration school, but, you know, I can kind of see it that way. But, um, you know, you got spells that even keep you from being detected, being scried on, like non-detection, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, protection from normal missiles. That's a staple. Minor glo- globe of invulnerability. That's another staple, you know. Right. And then, then they actually included spells like minor spell turning, <laughs> you know, which was actually pretty good. You know, they should have probably included that in uh, prismatic you know, sphere. Yep. Yeah. Yep, level nine. Yep, that's one of the best ones. But, you know, it like... Walk like through well, one like, of those the hard way. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you better have... Oh, God, you better have at least, what, three, four hundred hit points? Qu- hey, I got a question. Does that yeah. mean they cannot use magic items of these opposite schools, too? No, oh, no, they, they can use magic items. Yeah, I would say they could use like magic a, items. Like a wand of, yeah. of stone skin or something? Yeah, for Who sure. Who do you think buys them all? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who do you think buys them all? Specialist uh-huh. wizards who realize, oh, man, I needed some of that stuff, and I have specialized my way out of it. You know what I need? I need a ring of spell storing. I need a couple of wands, and I need a staff that can do some of the things that I can't. Mm-hmm, for you sure. But, you then know, pay up the wazoo to get it recharged, yeah. Yeah, well, hey, that's how you part a part of a, a player with his money, for sure. But, you know, yeah, the, the spell, I mean, the school itself... <laughs> You know, has some really good spells, but if you are an abjurer, I thought that you didn't have any offensive capability whatsoever, but that's my mistake. But, yeah, so, I mean, I'm just looking at the spell list and the things you can do with it. I mean, on top of the other spells that you're able to use, yeah, it's a very... Fire trap causes damage. Yep. Yeah, but you have to fire trap it in a certain way. <laughs> have you guys ever used... Fire uh... aura. Oh. Have you guys ever used abjurers in your in your game? I think I have. Mm-hmm. I think I have one as an NPC. You have know. you ever played one? Played one? No, I've never played. I think I've only played maybe three mages since I started playing second edition. I'm always drawn to the combat classes, but okay, yeah, I mean, but yeah, I mean, I could certainly. It'd be interesting to play an abjurer, and you you actually read the complete wizards. Uh, the complete book of wizards, it'll actually give you some good role playing tips for how to play and ab- an abjurer. You know, so uh, well, full on doesn't just doesn't strike me as the protective type person. Well, as he's more well, offense that he's more yeah. offense than defense. Hey, if I can make, clank clank, I'm a tank. If I can make a magical tank, even better. I have plans for that. <laughs> oh boy. See, yep. this is the danger. You see, this is the danger of doing Thaco's hammer. You give full on all kinds. See, I of give buttons. myself a combat elephant, and I put Morden Kanan's private sanctum on top in the <laughs> on top. Yeah, and then yeah, we're going yeah. to have him put on contact banishment on his war tusks. <laughs> yeah, there's no leg. And then give him an elemental aura of handedly. That's for sure. Then give him an elemental aura of fire. Wow. Yeah, exactly, and yeah, and watch a play, and watch a party of players try to get around all those spells. Hopefully, they've got a bunch of dispel magics because that's the only way we're going to get through most of that. And then I'm going to cast in vulnerability from magical weapons, <laughs> of course. And then I throw a beholder at you, <laughs> anti magic eye. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. but you know we're, but like I said, it's. You can use protective spells offensively if you have the, the uh, shall I say, gray matter in order to flip it on its head. And obviously, our... liches really hate anti magic shells for some strange reason. <clears throat> I don't know why. Yeah, <laughs> I find it irksome. <laughs> I'll bet they do. You know, oh, once you, you, if you, you're you, able oh, to blow past their magic resistance. Time for time for me to put a lich in my dungeon that has 18 strength. <laughs> yeah, take all my spells away. Come on. Dude, let's let's do it. Mm-hmm. I'll build us up a sword and just start whacking away. Yeah, just give, just make him like a, you know a nineteenth, twentieth uh, level mage and like a, an eighteenth level fighter. <laughs> Eighteen percental and, strength. Yeah. Why not? Sure. You know, but hey, go through. Have your buddy set up guards and wards, and then throw up a fear ward and send the whole party running in their own separate directions mm-hmm. somewhere into hey. 
this dungeon you designed that's nothing but a maze of death traps. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we will be talking about that in in a future segment. <clears throat> we will. You can talk about it to us, thinkoshammer at gmail dot com. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, let's uh, let's go on to a snipe hunt. Let's do that. <laughs> Two fools who laugh at death. Do you know what horrors lie beyond that wall? No. Then you go first. This world is divided into two kinds of people, the hunter and the hunted. And luckily, I'm a hunter. Nothing can ever change that. If it bleeds, we can kill it. I'll swallow your soul! Come get some. Time, Time for a snipe hunt. Snipe hunt. Uh, the Gith Yankee. There's a weird people for you. Mm-hmm. Gith Yankee? You mean the Gith blue-coated Yankee. rhino people? Up from the north? No, 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 no. Full on, stop. Oh, not a GIF Yankee. Yeah, no. G-I-T-H, <laughs> not G-I-F-F, smartass. <laughs> wow. But, yeah, these are, I remember when the, I think it was the, was it? Yeah, it was the Fiend Folio. Fiend when these first, Folio. Yeah, the first edition Fiend Folio came out. And they haven't and, been able to get rid of them since. Yeah. The hell, they are on the cover. Yeah, my D, yeah, my DM, yeah, exactly. There's a Gith Yankee on the cover. The, my DM at the time, he got so taken with the Gith Yankee and the Gith Zarar, which we will cover on another uh, splat book, but he got so taken with the Gith Yankee that they became the the main big drow. bads for a long they time. They became the drow of your kingdoms. Yeah, no, the, yeah, the drow were working for them at one point. <laughs> Let's put it that way. You know, it was like that. So, but yeah, these are one of the hardest toughest oh i mean i know i'm painting it with you know my own experiences back in the 80s but considering what you know what they what second edition did with them these can be you know the They're also well in in the uh in second edition they're known as gith yeah in exactly. monstrous monstrous manual page 151 mm-hmm. and on the other mm-hmm. and on, the, on the next okay, page they, they have their have... own yankee oh you're right i'm sorry the Gith is one thing. The Gith Yankee it's, are the Gith Yankee. Yeah. They are special. Oh, they right. have bait. They have adventurer bait. They have the best <laughs> adventurer bait. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Volan. That's right. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, that, uh, that Vorpal sword. But you don't have to throw Gith Yankee at adventures. You just have to let them know that you've allowed them into your campaign. They will be sought by players. Somebody is going to say. If they're suicidal what? enough. If they're suicidal enough, I mean, okay, let's break it down. And once you find where where you find Gith Yankee, you'll find uh, either Gizari. Yeah, Gizari. Yeah, you'll Gizari. find those two because those they hate each other. Yeah, they are mortal enemies. Yes, you don't want to be caught in the middle of a war between those two because yeah, you won't. You probably won't survive it. Um, I never warmed up to get the Yankee mainly because everybody else did. It's one of those cases of people pushed it too much, so I backlashed mm-hmm. on it. I yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah, I understand completely about that. Um, you know, Gith Yankee can find them mostly on the astral plane, but you will find them on the prime material plane every once in a while. And boy will you find them in Spelljammer. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Let's not we don't even have and to go probably there. Probably a spattering of them out in your spell in your in your uh, planescapes. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um they are uh you know, exceptional to genius intelligence. You know, uh they're any evil alignment. Now see, when the that's one of the differences from from first edition, they were just chaotic evil. So, you know, yeah. If you had a paladin who wanted a Vorpal sword, they were going after a Gith Yankee. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, well, you know, they, they were chaotic evil there, but then when the second edition rolled around, it's like, mm-hmm. well, we want smart Gith Yankee too. Some of the DMs yeah. were saying mm-hmm. we want to be able to fight evil, do evil intelligently. Exactly. Not don't just have their emotions carry them away. Right. Right. We don't have to plot and plan and you know that kind of thing. Yeah, that that was so, yeah, that was completely understandable. So now it's any evil, any evil alignment, exactly. Um, you know, when you encounter them away from their lair, you will only find two to eight of them, and they have class levels. <laughs> mm-hmm. And boy, do they have class levels. Um, 
movement rate is 12 normally, but on the astral plane, it's 96. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, if you encounter these guys on the astral plane, you are an, an immediate disadvantage. Um, let's see. They do have psionics. They have, they can, of course, they can use magical weapons and spells if they have, if they're inclined to such. Yes. Um, they say Gith Yankee are an ancient race descended from humans. They dwell upon the astral plane, but will often leave that plane to make war on other races. <laughs> they are engaged in a lengthy, lengthy war with the Gith Sarai. You know, so that's what you come into. Um, they're, Strongly humanoid appearance, they're, they're approximately human height, about six feet tall, but they tend to be much more gaunt and long of limb. They have rough yellow skin, gleaming black eyes that instantly betray their inhumanness. Like many demi-human races, their ears have sharp points and are serrated at the back. So these are some hmm. ugly mofos. If you were badass enough, I guess you could pull a fistful of dollars between them and the Gizrati. Yeah, you could. I'm thinking that this is one of those things, you know, uh, last man standing. Yeah, yeah, that's last, what I said. Last yeah, same thing. Standing. There's same an adventure thing. hook for you. <laughs> last thing. gift standing. Yeah, you show, yeah. you and your party show up in a in the neutral road between a half gift Zerai, half gift Yankee town. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that that's that's fistful of dollars right there. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> now, same same story, but but that it's kind of harder to pull off because they may be any evil, but all the gift Zerai are chaotic neutral, so they're mm-hmm. nuts. Yeah, not nuts, but no. they have their own interests. We've and... had this discussion before, yeah. Glenn. Yeah, we. Yes, have. I know, but I love to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> you just love getting people's goats, Glenn. Um, yeah. Yes, you do. Um, now, as far as combat goes, this is where it start, where the rubber meets the road. They say, mm-hmm. it, say the Gith Yankee have had long years to perfect the art of war. Their very existence <laughs> attests to their battle prowess. <laughs> and judging from the little table they have here. Uh, they they can be <clears throat> fighters, mages, fighter mages, illusionists, or knights, and they have a range in level from three to eleven, <laughs> which is pretty nasty. Just just just. You know, this again. is this is. Um, I can't figure out if they're the D and D equivalent of the old old way Klingons used to be or Romulans. Depending depending on what I'm I'm, le- I'm I'm leaning towards old old uh, Klingon because of that warrior nature. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would tend to agree with you. Um, now their armor, especially with their knights. Mm-hmm. The yeah, knights sure. are a special twist because yeah. those are basically, eh, we're not going to call them anti paladins, but they are. Yankee paladins, they're anti paladins call- because they have all the powers of a human paladin, mm-hmm. except their powers are turned to evil. Yep. Yep. Massively revered and serving their mysterious Lich Queen. Yes. <laughs> you don't want to run into her. Here's, um, here's, some, here's something. Why don't you take the uh, the dr- some of the Drow modules and replace the Drow with Gith Yankee? Easy. That's very easy to do. All you, all you have we, to do is make it on the... Queen of the yeah. Gith Yankee pits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can do it. Or even or even put it out in space, space, space. <laughs> if, with with spell jammer. Yeah, if you really want to do that. Okay. Put it on a Vault on of an, the Gift. Put, put it on yeah. <laughs> yeah, Vault of the Gift, exactly. Put Descent. it on an asteroid. Yeah. <laughs> Descent uh, uh, ascent Finding to asteroid. the heights of the astral plane, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, so these so you're not just gonna run into an average Gith Yankee. They are going to be classed and they're going to have levels and they're going to tend no. <laughs> they're going to tend to be high. You know, they're at least in the middle, you know, say from like uh say fifth to ninth, fifth to eighth, let's say. That which is pretty What now, are you doing? Do you even realize what you're doing? You don't even have a name tag. Do you realize who I am? Why don't you you just lie down lie down right now? <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have I don't want to know what that's from. Um yeah, you'll have you know, you'll have to tell me later. Um okay. Now, this is what Fulon was talking about in that their adventurer bait. Gith Yankee mm-hmm. soldiers use arms and armor similar to humans, although these are normally highly decorated and become almost religious artifacts. Gith Yankee would likely show greater care for his weapons and armor than he would towards his mate. Think about that. <laughs> that's very Klingon right there. Um Half of the Gith Yankee fighters, fighter mages, or knights that progress to fifth level receive a magical two handed sword plus one. Uh, Gith Yankee fighters, seventh level and above, are 60% likely to carry a long sword plus two. 
Knights of 7th level and above will always carry a silver sword. <laughs> a two-handed sword plus three, if used astrally, has a 5% chance of cutting an opponent's silver cord. Now, wow. if you know anything about the astral plane, <clears throat> anyone who is not native to the astral plane has a cord leading him back. Hey, to I, used to, I, used to read, I used to read Doctor Strange. I know what a silver cord is. Yeah, so you're going up against a fighter who basically has a one in 20 chance of basically stranding you in the astral plane forever. Even if you survive the experience of the encounter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, mind bar. That's what I have a sonic screwdriver for. Mm -hmm. Or a mind bar spell, <laughs> you know, mind bar because mind bar individuals are immune to that. A Supreme leader, however, will have a special Silver Sword plus 5 with all of the abilities of a Vorpal weapon that also affects mind barred individuals. Oh. Which is where the rubber meets the road, because <laughs> I've, I've been in a couple of games, and I've heard of, tell of a few more, where a player finds a Gith Yankee sword. <laughs> mm -hmm. and they think that they've got it made because now they have this nasty weapon that can lop off arms, legs, and heads. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. well, the next paragraph is where that whole assumption was wrong. Gith Yankee will never willingly allow a silver sword to fall in the hands of a non-Gith Yankee. Wow. If, if a special silver sword should fall into someone's hands, very powerful raiding parties will be formed to recover the sword. <laughs> Failure to recover one of these highly prized weapons surely means instant death to all Gith Yankees involved at the hands of their merciless Lich Queen. <laughs> so they're all going to make the morale checks. Don't yes. ask. No, it's just happening. Don't I would, bother. I would, I would put the sword in there. Let him use the sword for the adventure, and then, oh, you're going to sleep in the tavern. What do you do? We go out in the alley and we stick the sword in the dirt with a sign saying here free <laughs> yeah. hoping the kids yankee raiding party will pick it up if not boy somebody else is gonna have fun mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one of the other things about get yankee is that they already have of course they already have arm of course they have armor fighters and fighter mages are ranging from armor class five to armor class zero knights have mm. armor class zero and that's just a start never mind uh, magic, you know, any magical enchantments they have on it. So you are going to, when you encounter these guys, they're going to be well equipped. They're going to have tactics, if not similar to yours, better than yours. So mm -hmm. you've got problems. Um, of course, they have hit dice according to their class and level, and their hit points are rolled normally. Fighters get ten. <laughs> you know, knights get ten uh, d tens, and they have their faculty. They're doing. They're level. doing. They're doing. D10 yeah. for hit dice? Yeah, for the, I mean, fight, the, yeah, the fighters and knights, so, yes. Oh, oh. Yeah. so they're right up there with uh, Death Knights. Close. Very much so. Oh, yeah. boy. I thought yeah, Death yeah, Knights were the, the only, one, yeah. only one in the... Th only think one of it this D10. way. These are the descendants of a race of people who successfully rose up against and overthrew the shackles of being a dominated race under the rule of mind flayers. Mind flayers, yes, I was getting to that. <laughs> they did it on purpose. They did it themselves, and they've gotten bitter about the process in the doing of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Somebody told a story, I don't know if it was here on this show or on Save or Die, about a Planescape game where they had to go to get a special sword from a... Uh, a blacksmith or a weaponsmith in a city on the on uh, the on the plane, and it was run by a Gith Yankee. Mm -hmm. And Aladdin was really uncomfortable about it, and he says, "You're going up against the guys. Or you have to go up against these guys, the mind flayers. Here, take three swords." Yeah. He says, "But you're evil." He says, "Yeah, but I hate them worse." Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> you know go kill them. No skin off my nose. Yeah, you know? that that's probably the only, probably the only. Uh, instance aside from if you're aiding them against the gith Zerai, those are the only two instances where you will be probably that's working the, with a gith yankee that's the unholy alliance yeah right there yeah oh, let, let let me break something down to you now uh if you decide if there is a gith yankee stronghold on the prime material <laughs> plane this is what they have one supreme leader 11th level fighter or seven eight fighter mage Two captains, 8th level fighter or 7-6 fighter mage. One 8th level knight, 
two warlocks of four to seven, fourth to seventh level, three sergeants, fourth to seventh level, two mm. gish fighter. Those are fighter mages of four, four, you know, fourth level, fourth level, and twenty to fifty lower levels from one to three. <laughs> Go, bro! Oh, no, it gets better. <laughs> oh, it gets better. Oh um, yeah. They actually get Yankee on the prime material plane. They tend to have packs with red dragons. Mm-hmm. So they will act as mounts and companions to the Gith Yankee. So yeah, if you find uh out find a party of Gith Gith Yankee outside of their lair, it's like this: one eighth level fighter captain, one warlock, fourth to seventh level mage, five lower Gith Yankees of first <clears> to third <throat> level, and they will have two they will have two red dragons as steeds transporting four to Sith Gith Yankee per dragon. <laughs> so, so whole new definition to APC. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so they're a whole lot of fun. Tell us about it, folks. That goes yeah, hammer sure. gmail dot com. Mm-hmm. And now we go into our final segment: DMs rag. Journey now to an age undreamed of, an age of mystery and magic. You. Are a worthy opponent. Five. Oh, great. <laughs> you got an arrow right in your chest. And you're out ten minutes. Oh, no. Don't worry about it, Mike. I got resurrection. I'll bring you back. I'm already one of the undead, Greg. I can still throw death spells, huh, Steve? The DM's rag. DM's rag. We're looking at dungeon number 26, The Inheritance. Mm hmm. This is a very good first to third level adventure. Mm-hmm. Great to start off. If you don't have B1 or B2 or whatever they do for <laughs> advanced to start them out, yeah. use this. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, for sure. It's great to start them out. Uh, it's, your base, it's your basics. Somebody in the party inherits a castle. Mm-hmm. you got to clean it out to take your inheritance. Yeah. Well, the problem I mean, is yeah, I mean, go ahead. The problem is it's overrun by hobgoblins. Mm-hmm. And the uncle who left it to you was an illusionist. Yeah. To sweeten the pot a bit. Mm-hmm. illusion spells and stuff like that right, right um you know this could be either and i would you know this would be great as kind of a quasi horror thing you have to stay a night in the castle or you don't get it or something like that <laughs> um this is almost scooby-doo fodder almost almost yeah if yeah if scooby-doo were be- were much better ass kickers let's put it that way yeah um now this this adventure is ma- it was uh made by uh paul culotta who actually went on i don't know if he was actually attached to tsr at this point because this was uh what 1990 when it, yeah 1990 when this issue of, of dungeon came out um at this point i think he was just uh somebody who sent stuff into tsr and they would use it he's a freelancer yeah he's a freelancer at the time yeah but he actually became attached to tsr he actually got credit on several uh forgotten realm supplements mm-hmm. um of course, and of course, with that being said, this adventure is based in the Forgotten Realms, but you can easily adapt it to your own campaign world or another one with just a little bit of thought and a little bit of tweaking. I'd put it in Candyland. <laughs> of course you would. <laughs> oh, God. I, I, I got full on the face palm. I love it. I thought I'd never get her to do that. I just got a vision of, pull, of pulling the lollipop card and being able to go all the way halfway across the board. Anyway. Um, yeah, like, uh, like Glenn said, you, you know, uh, one of your, one of the PCs, uh, inherits a castle from a, you know, from, you know, a a distant relative. They refer to him as uncle throughout the entire adventure. And apparently uncle saved the lives of one of the Lords of Waterdeep and was rewarded with a grant of land money and the commissioning of a mart, modest keep. God, I can't even talk. Um, he found a wife in the nearest town, which is called Red Larch, and took her to the keep, but otherwise kept to himself. The wife died two years ago in childbirth, okay. and the baby with her. That's pretty sad. Um, then two months two months uh, ago, before the PCs get involved, a raiding patrol of the, the Lost of Finger. Oh my God! <laughs> uh, the Lost of Finger Hob. I, I, I have tried. been. I, I have. I have adventured in this adventure. You really? You have? Really? I have. Okay. Say, have, say, my say, wife <laughs> was the player for this. Okay. And so was I. Your oh. wife was? Awesome. Yes, she was the inheritee. 
Oh, Ooh. awesome, awesome. Sa save that, save that for... So you've got some experience, so go ahead and finish it, Brian. Okay. Oh, yeah. So basically, two months ago, a, a Hobgoblin <laughs> tribe assaulted the keep at night by, you know, by surprise, and the the uncle barely managed to escape through a secret door before an ob Hobgoblin arrow caught him in the back. Um, for several days, he wandered towards uh, the town, Red Larch, in search of aid, but the arrow wound took his toll. So he, you know, he died of that. Before he died, he wrote out the will, which may, which is where the PCs come in. So now uh, the, the Hobgoblin tribe is, uh, he, they haven't moved into the keep, but they use it as an outpost. So they use it as a base to raid against caravans or merchants that pass by. And it's not a large tribe of Hobgoblins. It's only, they, there's only 21 of them <laughs> with one ape. And that I thought that was kind of weird, but then again, this is a low-level module, so That's I have to keep that mm. in mind. Um, so yeah, so basically, what happens is the players, you know, they basically have to take the take the keep back from the hobgoblins. That's at the, the same first time part. looking at the same time trying to keep themselves alive from any kind of illusion traps the uncle right. may have left up before he died. Yeah. That was the second part of it. Yeah. Cause oh, once you yeah. get into the, get into the keep, then now you have to deal with uncle's uh, illusion traps. And there are a couple of pretty uh, ingenious ones in here and smart players. I'm looking at you full. I would, would figure out how to use those illusion traps against the hobgoblins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thumbs up. Full it, on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Um, but yeah, I mean, you, it basically, this whole thing comes into, uh, you know, it basically, uh, you have to pretty much plan an assault and figure out how you're going to get these guys out of here. And then once you, uh, once you're able to do that, that's when you kind of, you know, try to figure out, you know, where the traps are and, you know, how you get around them or, you know, get rid of them. So. Right. You know, okay, it, now it, let us let us turn to full on. You say you've played in this before. Yes. Yes. What were see, the circumstances? We were, well, we were dr drawing from a what? deck of many things, unfortunately, and somebody ended up with the keep. <laughs> Your wife. And the delivery system of said keep was we were ensconced to go partake in the inheritance. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So I am well versed with the Lost of Finger Tribe, Crypt Garden Forest, Red Larch, mm -hmm. Westwood, South Crypt, and all the other little interesting places that lurk around here. Mm -hmm. And so, how did the game go? Well, we took it, obviously. Obviously. Because <laughs> she was a necromancer working her way towards Lich. I was a uh, half ogre Myrmidion, uh, <laughs> and we had other friends of surprise. Uh, lesser. Uh, disciplined and, and uh, moral bents that allowed us to just lay waste to those who dared stand before us. Mm -hmm. And then we met, we've used that area as our base zone to start building up and doing the whole uh, worked our way up into... We did not run it at first level. Okay. We were running this as... We were hitting this in the upper teens, mid... Tw upper teens, really? lower 20s. Oh, okay. wow. What did the DM and it was, substitute? Yeah, how did he fix... Uh, he made them very mean. Oh, because so he was a big fan of Dragon Man. Oh, they were still hobgoblins, but think you—you you know what you know? Tucker's Kobolds were like in Dragon Mountain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I wish I knew yeah. that example, but yeah. Now, well, okay. One thing. One. Thing. All right. Well, this here's the Colonel's hobgoblins. Okay. <laughs> now, see no? this. This I have no problem with because. They are because hobgoblins are as intelligent as an average person, if not more so. That I don't have a problem with. It's when you start using low intelligence monsters and giving them special forces tactics that I start ha that I start gritting my teeth. But continue. <laughs> I digress. I apologize. Oh no, yeah, we still had fun with it. We uh, we we were meeting the terms of the will, <clears throat> uh, purging the keep of. I believe we used a different map. We uh -huh. needed a little bit more. Yeah, you need something uh, a little bigger. This is a small, small keep. Yes, you know, I'm looking. I'm looking at the map, and the 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 main level is not very big. You know, it's like what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's like eleven by eleven, or eleven mm -hmm. by ten. So it's not that not that big. But yeah, I, I mean, I yeah, totally. Yeah, it's, it's more like that, that's like a border. That's like a border post. 
yeah. power just for, like tax collecting or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But again, that's what all that is when you're talking about dungeons. What's mm-hmm. the purpose of those hilltop castles were to monitor traffic and control the roads. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what this would be. Same same concept. Probably on an intersection somewhere. Not just it's back in the woods where no one goes. No, it's got to be in a commanding view of the landscape around. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. So, you know, and you know, I can only imagine trying to make this, you know, trying to make this like, you know, for a uh, uh, upper teens level party. <laughs> I can only imagine what it is because, you know, you have to make the five goblins physically a lot physically tougher and you have to give or, them or give them a lot or put a lot more of them in there. Yeah, yeah. There I was just... a little bit of both. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. There was a lot of both. <laughs> I'm sure. Cuz you they know... got busy making babies and then they Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, like, getting back to the original, I mean, yeah, yeah, you're going through the whole thing. I mean, the, I think the worst monster that you fight in here is probably is probably a ghoul, which is pretty nasty for a first level party. Oh, you yeah. know, and <laughs> you've got illusionary traps. I mean, there's there's one that's like, <clears throat> I won't say it's grim tooth level, but it is pretty nasty. <laughs> oh, this is this this adventure. So. We took Grinkle prisoner and we made him our snitch for the adventure, <laughs> and we kind of force fed him <laughs> at knife point to work for us until he betrayed us later to his really really poor judgment. <laughs> oh, so oh, so he decided to he decided to try and backstab you at some point. Well, he's a hobgoblin. Of course, he's going to try to hob. He's going to hobgoblin us. Yeah, yeah. it didn't, it didn't well work too him. well he, though. Did it? You know, <laughs> this is this is this is prime material. This adventure sounds prime material of prime material for uh, buffing it with the tome of horrors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now the whole the funny thing is is that if the they even give a little. This is what I liked about Paul Culotta, because I've seen this in a couple of his other adventures. He mm-hmm. actually gives uh, instances if the party's unsuccessful in taking the keep or you know, or even accomplishing whatever it is in whatever adventure. Now, basically mm-hmm. what happens if they're not successful, the keep and its belongings will, will revert to the Lords of Waterdeep. They will send mm-hmm. out a full company with cavalry and, sea, and siege engines to take it. And, you know, because of that, then all of a sudden, you know, you know, the players have, you know, the players have an opportunity to kind of gain a little notoriety in the area. This is what I like about these adventures. And not just because, you know, it's a nice little low level advent- adventure for, you know, a low level adventure. It also puts it in a location that is far enough removed from, from water deep, which I think, I think is like about six or 700 miles, something like that. But right. It's an area that is not very well settled. So an adventuring party could, if they take this keep, they can use it as a base to go hither and yon and here and there and be able to gain, give themselves not only levels of experience and things like that, because in this region there are other areas to investigate in that area aside from just going there and taking the keep and just like, okay, I guess this is home now. No, all of a sudden it's like, you know, it just sort of opens up the, the region. And even then, you know, then there's a, you know, and I am all for beginning adventures that mm -hmm. do like one to three that give the players a base of operation. Right. This is another one of those things also that you would do so well if you're going to run this adventure mm-hmm. to get your hands on Volo's Guide right. to the, the North. North. Absolutely. Because it's got Red Larch, it's got West Bridge, it's got Amphale, <clears throat> it's got the barge right in. And, okay. and if you want to supp- right. and if you want to supplement that, get water deep in the north. Yeah, between those two supplements and this adventure, mm-hmm. it, this is one of those examples where you don't have to go to the uh, the famous locations in the Forgotten Realms. You can go to like a place like this, like in a little town called Red March, and you can just be the heroes of this area. It's awesome. And you can always, and you can always transplant all those little cities and stuff into your own world. Yeah, and. It, True. Just, and, and, and like I said, at the end of this module, he, it, the author even gives you little adventure ideas like, mm-hmm. OK, uh, the Lost of Finger tribe sends another troop of hobgoblins to relieve the ones that were there. And 
<laughs> you know, and then the players may find the keep reoccupied and they have to take it again. Or mm -hmm. thieves from Waterdeep might want to keep take the keep for themselves. Uh, the, there's a barbarian tribe in the Crypt Garden Forest. They that they decide how that ancestral. Far, that's, yeah, go ahead. According to the map, how far is this Red Marsh and the and the castle Red um, March, from Waterdeep? Now I'm looking. Red March is about I'm going to say 500 miles to the north. Mm -hmm. uh, call it just about 600 miles to the keep. Yeah, uh, the keep is actually in between the two forks of the main roads running north from Waterdeep. One follows the coast road mm -hmm. and goes past the Mirror of Dead Men, which is why my wife was interested in it with her necromantic. <laughs> and the other one runs wow. up past through the train of villages that go up towards Westbridge and on to the on to the north northeast. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, like I said, this is a nice little area for the players to establish and themselves. You, and if you worry about. And, clearing out a keep if you move that town a few hundred miles towards water deep mm -hmm. you can also say well one of these levels of under mountain halister got real ambitious and and expanded it to right under your keep yep there's a yeah there's a gate to under mountain under your keep <laughs> your yeah. uncle your uncle could have been could have been I won't say friends with Hallister, but let's just say that Hallister took an interest Hallister in him. Hallister wanted him to live in interesting times. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Actually, Hallister needed a drinking buddy in Skullport, so he said, hey, come on, let's go. Yeah, exactly. And this is right at one of those crossroads of the, – the, the keep isn't located at a crossroads, unless you want it to be located at a crossroads, but it is that outpost – in the wilderness that's designed to place you you need a forest you have a forest you need mountains you got mountains yep. you need a hills you got hills right. you want a swamp you got swamp yeah you want occupied traveled roads good you want ruins with names we have ruins with names we, like we got the ocean everything that you could possibly want to adventure in on or around is there exactly yeah which what, or which... you could take a plane escape a uh, portal to the to the plains from there because uh, the realms are littered with them. Or you could go into the Undermountain or Underdark. Or yeah, put a, yeah. Port, and, port, put a portal to Greyhawk or some other place. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. And like I said, the the main city, the, you know, Waterdeep, the the jewel of the Sword Coast or whatever they call it, it's it's there, but it's far enough away that you've got to make the trek. Now, my whole thing is is that okay? Now you've got a bunch of novice adventurers who have a keep now now they have to be able to keep the keep they have to be able to hold on to it so they one of the first adventures i would have is be like yeah they need to, they need to have people they need to have people to uh staff the keep they have to have just why i told them yeah. to put a level of under mountain right right under it they're gonna have to keep clearing that thing out yeah for sure you know, well, it could it could be eventually like that. you're gonna have to deal you're gonna have to deal with hirelings eventually. You're gonna have yep. to deal with some sword folk eventually and say, Look, we are going to Hey You know, we've gotta come off the wall because the wall needs men. Yep. yep. Let's head back to Waterdeep and petition for men. Exactly. And that's a whole thing in and of itself. Yep. And you know, the adventure I love these things because, you know, even though it's a very focused goal for the adventure, it's like you can go in so many different directions off of that one thing, you know, and it's just, yeah, I find it very, I find this adventure to be just excellent. I love it. And, and one of the privies is actually a back door to Menza Baranzen. <laughs> <laughs> or Night Below, either one. Hey, there's at, a murder that, hole down this toilet. At that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> at that point, I'd be like, I don't think the DM wants us to keep this place. He keeps putting nastier, nastier stuff in here every time we leave. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Mm, invest in a good security system, adventurers, to hold the place while you're gone and hope they don't actually turn out to be agents of the Zentrum who needed to keep yep, or the, a way station or the, or and a waypoint. Because the, the then you got to take it back again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can just... Somebody's knocking on your door. It's five guys in red robes who have a contract who'd like to outsource some of your rooms. Oh, jeez. Can... Yeah, for yeah. manufacturing well, and distribution there's the purposes. Well, there's a privy. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine trying to say no to the Red Wizard of Fae. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that happening. <laughs> but that's yeah, why I keep, That's why I keep the illusion of Elminster around. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. 
But yeah, and he's I messing with it and taking its every, pants off. Every time we go up to that keep, he's always visiting. I don't get it. <laughs> hey, that's hey, that's one hell of a security system because hardly anybody. And now you see, a DM can play that either way. Either people will leave them alone because it's one of Elminster's little favorite hangouts, or all of a sudden people wanting to kill him start visiting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it, giving this a rating, I'd rate this a five. Because oh, yeah. there's just two, I mean, aside from actually taking the key <clears throat> and navigating the illusions, which are hard enough and you're suitably rewarded yeah. with certain magic items and things like that during the adventure, there are so many ways a DM, whether they want to be nice like me or if they want to really, you know, put a, a really nasty, st- nasty twist on it like Fulon probably would, you know, you can go in any different direction regarding this key. And You're right. what they can do with it. And it's it's populated with such interesting character, right. such, you know, unique mindsets between, you know, they give you some of the meat. Uh, they give you, you know, uh, the Lost of Finger tribe, mm-hmm. which are freaky in their own right. Yep. And then they turn around and give you some special characters and characterizations within just to make them stand out. Yeah. Yeah, that's you know, something. And I, yeah, I didn't even go. I didn't even Everything talk about from that. scum and smut <clears throat> to grinkle. <laughs> yeah, some of the na- cl- some of the names he came up with are pretty funny. So here's what I do. Yes, I'd ask Callister to put a mini level down there, and instead, it's is near the coast. Instead of Skullport, put the Clown Motel. Oh, jeez, <laughs> with a graveyard next to it. No, no, we're no, we are nowhere near Long Saddle. Keep those freaks away from us. Yeah, will you, yeah. Will you please stop mentioning that thing? I'm, I'm that that whole website that you sent me scared the living crap out of me. I'd, I'd sooner sleep in the desert than sleep in that. You want, you want to hear something funny? At What's the that? end, he says, you better call ahead because they book up real fast. Yeah, I'm not surprised. All kinds of freaks and weirdos out there, they love it. Some people, I know some all, people all those, love to stay there. All those conspiracies, conspiracy nuts of the, the UFO lookers and oh yeah yeah the, ghost yeah, exactly. hunters and all that yeah. i have no doubt oh god <laughs> anyway anyway it's it, it's a it's in dungeon number 26 folks called the inheritance really good for starting up party or a high level party as full on proved yep uh you just gotta bump it up a whole lot yep make them make them keep... meaner make them tougher and yeah and they have the high and they have the high ground good luck make make them full on <laughs> full that's what i'm gonna i, I meant i invented a new word fulling on full on the dungeon yeah full on the dungeon okay i'm down with that <laughs> you know from murder hole I, yeah i still think murder hole down in the privy that'd be great um so tell us about uh, thinkoshammer gmail.com and we got to close this splat book because uh we got places to be and these guys uh, need their rest and so yeah, do i for sure so uh, I, so I, I, oh, <laughs> what no go ahead Corey. glenn Corey already said goodbye, so say goodbye, full on. Goodbye, Gamer Nation. We bring you greetings from the secure keep deep in the heart of the Crypt Garden Forest. Please, <laughs> come in. Stay. <laughs> if you... You'll be invited. You can always leave. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> say goodbye. Say goodbye, Brian. Uh, but we're hobgoblins, uh, you know, holding keeps. Good night, folks. Oh, yeah. And this is DM Glenn saying we'll see you next time at the Clown Motel where our next ah. event is going to be. And when the hammer comes down, I think goes hammer. Bye bye. Oh, man. Yeah, we should have Thinko Khan there. You're crazy. At Absolutely. Clown I will not Motel. show up. I will not show up. No. Thinko's Hammer theme is provided by the Diablo Swing Orchestra. You'll find them on gemendo.com. All other additional music for this episode was provided by Kevin McLeod. You'll find more of his music on Incompetech.com. Be sure to visit our website at ThakosHammer.info. If you have any questions or comments, email us at ThakosHammer at gmail.com. Remember, that's an O, not a zero. You can also find us on the second edition forums at OSRGaming.org and at PurpleWorm.org. Or give us a call and leave us a voicemail at 405-806-0555. See you next time when the hammer comes down on Thaco's Hammer.